What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about the glands of the skin. So the integumentary system consists of the skin and its so-called appendages, which include the nails, the hair, and glands. Now there are two main types of glands found in the skin. You have sweat glands and you have sebaceous oil glands. Now both of those glands originate in the epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin, but they grow and develop downward into the dermis and sometimes even the hypodermis during fetal development. First, let's talk about sweat glands. And the skin contains two main types of sweat glands, which are also referred to as sudoriferous glands. That's just a fancy word from the Latin that means bearing sweat. So two types of sweat glands. The first type is eccrine glands. These are found almost everywhere on the skin surface, but they are especially concentrated on the palms, soles of the feet, and your head. So if you ever get really excited and have sweaty palms, you can thank your eccrine glands for that. These tubular glands have a coiled appearance and secrete a watery substance through a pore on the skin surface. And these become functional soon after birth. And that's really important because the primary function of eccrine glands is to help cool the skin. But they also do have other functions. For example, they secrete up to 1% of salts, waste, and other compounds that actually inhibit the growth of pathogens. Now the other main type of sweat gland is called an apocrine gland. These glands are primarily found in the armpits, and anogenital region. And these glands secrete a milky substance rich in protein that actually stinks after bacteria come and feast on it. Now, whereas the eccrine glands had pores that open onto the skin surface, apocrine glands are a little different because they secrete their milky substance through openings in hair follicles. And unlike the eccrine glands, which were ready to go soon after birth, these babies don't become active until the hormonal changes during puberty. Now, a lot of people will get eccrine glands and apocrine glands mixed up, so here's a really simple way to remember the difference. Apocrine starts with an A because those glands are mostly found in the armpits and anogenital region, which also starts with an A. And since you tend to grow hair in those areas during puberty, that's when they become active. Eccrine starts with an E because they are almost everywhere on the skin. Now, eccrine glands and apocrine glands are the two main types of sweat glands found in the skin but you also have special subtypes, if you will, of apocrine glands, which are called modified sweat glands. One type of modified sweat gland is called a ceruminous gland. And this actually works with the oil secreting sebaceous glands that I'll talk about here in a moment to create a substance known as cerumen, or you might know it better as earwax. And earwax, of course, provides the important function of lubricating and waterproofing the external ear canal, as well as protection against pathogens, random debris, and so forth. Now, both the gland and the product it produces start with C-E-R-U-M, so that's going to help you remember that these two go together. Ciliary glands are found along the eyelid and work with oil-secreting sebaceous glands to keep eyelashes flexible. When something is silly, you roll your eyes, so that can help you remember where the ciliary glands are located. Now, the other type of modified African glands you need to know about are called mammary glands. And for some reason, I'm doing this a lot during this lecture. Kind of feel like Dr. Evil. But mammary glands are specialized glands that secrete milk and the word mammary refers to breast and these glands typically only become active in females during and after a pregnancy. We have a whole video on breastfeeding by the way if you need to know more about that. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is that all those sweat glands that I just talked about they release their contents through exocytosis which is where the contents transfer from inside the cell to outside the cell and they use a secretion type known as merocrine secretion and all that means is that the cell cell actually remains unharmed and intact during that secretion process. So just to recap, two main types of sweat glands found in the skin, eccrine and apocrine. Now the second main type of gland found in the skin is called the sebaceous oil gland. And these glands produce sebum, an oily substance that helps lubricate the skin and hair. And sebum also actually helps the skin to retain water. And you'll notice that sebaceous and sebum both start with SEB, so that's gonna be an easy way for you to remember what these glands produce. 
Now, sebaceous glands are found throughout the skin except for the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. So remember those eccrine sweat glands, they're found in abundance in the palms of the hand and soles of the feet, but you're generally not going to find the sebaceous oil glands in those regions. And these glands form in grape-like clusters, and they're made up of acini cells which eventually are going to fill up with that sebum, and then they're going to rupture, releasing that sebum into a small duct that connects to a main central duct, which is then going to generally empty into the hair follicle. Now, unlike those sweat glands, which use exocytosis to release their fluids via American secretion, which remember, that means the cell's intact and it's just releasing its fluid, this is different. The cell's rupturing and it's breaking apart. So it's little bits of the cells mixed in with that sebum. And so this is called holocrine secretion. Interestingly, sebaceous glands become active during puberty, which was just like those African sweat glands. Remember the African glands in those pubic regions? So when you start to develop hair there, that's when those become activated. Same thing with the sebaceous oil glands, which if you think about it, your skin gets kind of greasy and oily, you tend to get acne and stuff when you hit puberty, and that's when those glands become active. And these sebaceous oil glands most commonly attach to hair follicles. However, the sebaceous glands are also present in some areas without hair, in which case they're going to secrete their sebum through a pore in the skin. Okay, that wraps up this quick lecture over the glands of the skin. Now you can take a free quiz on our website that's going to help you lock this information in your brain and remember it for exams. So you might want to go and practice that. In addition, we have a whole anatomy playlist. You can click the link in the description below to check out those videos. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.